Batman. Okie dokie. That is not Spring Street. Let's try that again. Maybe it is. Let's see. Okay, yeah. All right. So I want to welcome everybody to OK Google. Don't pay attention to the cannoli behind me. That's not especially what I wanted to show you. I want to show you something else that was on Spring Street. But today, oh, I said the, the word. We're going to talk about OK G-O-O-G-L-E. I don't want to say it because it's going to make my phones go crazy and stuff like that. Now, we have to talk about, though, the elephant in the room. This is a Samsung phone. This is my personal Samsung phone. Um, and this is probably the last Samsung phone that's ever going to be distributed and successful because Google did something very, very interesting. Now, we all know that Samsung phones run a piece of software called Android. I know you're iPhone people. Beg with, bear with me for a minute. I'm going to show you stuff that work with iPhone. Samsung phones do something called Android. Now, I want to talk to you about these two phones that are in my hand. This is, these are the two biggest phones in the world. This is the iPhone and this is the Samsung phone. The iPhone is built by Apple manufactured by Apple, <laughs> sold in Apple stores, warrantied by Apple and everything like that. The Samsung phone is built with parts by LG, built with parts by Samsung, built with parts by HTC, running software by Google, sold by Best Buy, on your cell phone carrier, supported by a third party insurance company. Are we beginning to understand why people like the iPhone a little bit better. The, one company owns the entire path of the iPhone. And why the Android has never taken the high end. The higher end phones have always been the iPhone. A lot of people don't realize this. 90%, oh, that's something I'm going to show you in a second. 90% of the phones that Samsung sells are low end phones, are not the high end phones that compete with the iPhone. Only about 10% are the high end phones that compete with the iPhone. What's interesting, what you're looking at right now, it just went off. What you're looking at right now is in late October of last year, Google did something very interesting. What they did is they said, we're going to go ahead and we are going to compete directly with Apple on our own. And we're going to own the full chain. So Google went out and did something that I've never seen a company do before. They built five of their own products to directly compete with Apple. Made by Google, created by Google, supported by Google, directly from Google. And they're the first big Google products that have ever really come out. And the reason I haven't shown you any of this yet is because it wouldn't make sense up until this point, because we're gonna talk about some Google Photos and Gmail stuff in today's class. But how many of you ever bought a physical thing from Google? Probably nobody's bought a physical thing from Google. I wanna show you five physical products that Google has made that rival that of Apple. And I make this in all honesty, they really, oh, is it playing monkeys? I don't remember taking this Pearl, picture. Donkey. This is going to be interesting. Uh, <laughs> I don't know whatever's going to show. Okay, that's okay. So we can let that show up. That's okay. But what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about the Google Home, the Google Chromecast, the Google Wear Watches, Google Wi-Fi, the Google Pixel, and the Daydream. You don't need to remember all these things, please. So don't don't worry about that. But. What this is, is everybody, when I show them this phone, they, I go, what is this phone? They go, it's an iPhone. This is the Google iPhone. In my personal opinion, this is the first Android phone that's ever been made for a general customer that's worth buying. It is on par with an iPhone. If you have a problem, you can call a support line and they'll actually help you. They won't point fingers at Best Buy and Google and Samsung and everyone like this. This is fully Google. So what's interesting, what I want you to know is this is Google's version answer to Apple. But if you were in the Amazon class the other day, you might have seen Alexa. Mm -hmm. So I want to show you Google's answer to Alexa. This is called the Google Home. It's also known as the air freshener lookalike. <laughs> <laughs> kind of looks like an air freshener. It doesn't poof. I have one of those in my cabin, and it shoots me in the face every morning when I wake up. It just so happens that the 19 minutes comes to pass right when I'm standing in front of it. <laughs> and I smell like green apple all day. But uh, this is called the Google Home. And what it is, is it's very similar to the Alexa, but what you do is you trigger it by saying, OK, Google, and then it starts listening. So it starts listening. So let's start with something very simple. Very simple. I always start with this one because it lets me know what's going on. OK, Google, what's the time in Miami? It's a simple one. It's going to take slightly longer to do this. But... The time in Miami, FL USA, 7.05 p.m. on Thursday. That's right. 
So what this is, is this is a kind of a wireless companion. It does almost everything that the Amazon Alexa will do. So I can say Alexa. I'm hesitant to say the word Alexa, but Alexa's not here. So I can say Alexa all I want. I just can't say the other phrase. <laughs> but what's cool is it interfaces with a lot of different things. Now, have any of you ever heard of something called Nest before? Which is a little digital thermostat. Google actually bought that company and integrated. And I can say, OK, Google, set the temperature to 72 degrees. Stop talking for about four seconds before you ever try to do this. Over. Did we get a phone call from your mom? Sorry, I'm not sure which device you'd like to control. Can you be more specific? Okay, so I need to tell it which device. So I can say, okay, Google, set the kitchen temperature to 72 degrees. And what that's doing, I'm, I'm being quiet. I'm Sorry, in. something went wrong. Okay. Try again in a few seconds. Okay, it doesn't want to talk to my kitchen thermometer. But this is kind of Google's answer to Siri, if that makes sense. But here's where this starts to get really, really, really cool. Imagine for a second if Alexa actually had a screen. Now, this would not make any sense until you saw Google Photos, but I can say the name of my screen that you're looking at right now, it's called Batman. Now, you might say, why is my screen called Batman? It's because in my house, I have five screens. And they're all named Batman, Joker, Robin, <laughs> and they're, they're all named by different uh, Batman characters. And what I have plugged into it, I'm going to see how much I can lift this up without breaking it. What I have plugged into it is Google's answer to like an Apple TV. It's called a Chromecast. I'm going to show it to you a little bit quicker in the long run. But it's called a Chromecast. And what I can do is I can say, OK, Google, show me my pictures of Richard and Ron on Batman. Hmm, something went wrong. I know Try what again went in a few wrong. Seconds. I know what went wrong. Ron left the room. Uh, Ron broke something. Sorry, I couldn't find it. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Okay, Google. Show me photos of Richard and Ron on Batman. There was a glitch. Try again in a few seconds. Give me a couple seconds to have a little discussion with my TV here. <laughs> Never do things live, guys. Bad idea. What is it plugged into? Is it plugged into the computer? I'm blaming it on Ron. So it's hooked up to the internet. So it's got some. It's got power on it, and it's hooked up to the internet. But when I've got this, let me try one more time. Okay, Google, show me photos of Richard and Ron on Batman. Sorry, something went wrong. Sometimes. <laughs> You just unplug it and you put it back in. But what was cool is Google actually, to put these products out, they opened a store that didn't sell anything, it just showed you all of these different things. Now I'm gonna wait for this to come back, but this guy right here, I'll show you real quick, it's called a Chromecast. And you plug it into your TVs, and this is like an Apple TV, and it'll work with all of these things that I'm showing you right now. We'll work with iPhones, <coughs> we'll work with iPads, we'll work across all of the different devices. Let me plug this in though, in foot number one. Let me get this going. It's going to come up on the screen. Hopefully things are going to behave with me and I'll be able to show you. Here we go. Yes. Okay. So they're rebooting. It's not the best idea to show this on a cruise ship, but I like to live life dangerously. We should be okay on there in a second. And if I ask it something, it can actually use this as a screen. Now at home, obviously it'll work 100% of the time. I'm just, uh, I'm chancing fate right now. Let's try this. Okay, Google. Show me pictures of Richard and Ron on Batman. Showing your photos of Richard and Ron on Batman. Now this is going into my Google Photos library and it's gonna pull up my pictures of me and Ron. <laughs> now here's the cool thing. This wasn't planned. Name me something I might've taken a picture with at some point in time. Penguins. No, that's too easy. I, I tested that earlier. Give me something else, something more difficult. Captain Leo. Um, you wouldn't know Captain Leo because we're not personal friends, oh, but... Uh, Eagles. Eagles. Awesome question. I, I know I've taken a picture in some of my 500,000 pictures with eagles. Okay, Google. Show me my pictures of eagles on Batman. And in a few seconds. 
never know what's going to show on it. I really should watch this. Showing your photos of eagles on Batman. Oh. Oh, look. <laughs> going through my entire photos library and it's finding the pictures of eagles oh. and I've got it and I can go in and I can query I can ask for anything that's in my Google photos library and it can show it on the biggest screen in the house now here's the thing I haven't picked up a phone I haven't typed anything in if I wanted to go ahead and look at next girlfriend of mine let's see uh, that's an absolutely bad idea okay Google <laughs> show me photos of Richard and Carly on Batman And it's good to think about it. I have to stop talking, and it's hard for me to stop talking. No photos of Richard and Carly found in your Google Photos gallery. <laughs> but I can get even more specific. I can say, okay, Google, show me photos of Richard drinking on Batman. <laughs> Showing your photos of Richard drinking on Batman. <laughs> I don't know what the next thing's gonna come up is. Okay, this is oh. that's my Facebook profile picture. That's at a that's at the Coke Experience in in Orlando, Florida. There's me and my sister, and um, I'm not gonna risk it anymore. Okay, Google, stop casting. Richard, what's the Batman? Okay, I'm gonna show you what the Batman is. So the Batman is. The Batman is the name of my TV, but what's making the Batman work is this little thing called the Chromecast. So, but what I can also do, give me something that you might find a video of on YouTube. Okay, yeah, okay, perfect. Okay, Google, show me a video of Celebrity Eclipse from YouTube on Batman. And what it's going to do is this is directly tied into all of Google's services. So, let me see. Sure, playing Celebrity Eclipse videos from YouTube on Batman. So I can go in and I have this. And the cool thing is that both my little Google Home and my phone are listening to what's going on. And here we go. This is the cruise on Celebrity Eclipse in January 2017. I don't know. I might be in this video. No, I won't. Oh, this is just a video someone made. And if I wanted to pause it, I could go, okay, Google, stop. And then hopefully it will stop it. But here's the cool thing. I hate that I have to stop talking when I demo this. I might just go to a remote and stop it. I'm just gonna go to a remote and stop it. But I can go in and I can ask any kind of command, anything I want. I could say, okay, Google, play House of Cards from Netflix on Batman. Sorry, something went wrong. I haven't connected Try again my in Netflix a few account seconds. properly yet, but okay, Google. Play House of Cards from Netflix on Batman. The cool thing, I hate that I have to stop talking for a couple seconds. It kills me. I like to talk. It's very hard. So you really only need that if you don't have life. You really only need that if you don't have life? Is that what you said? You don't have a life. If you don't have a life. That went dark really quick. Uh, Watching Here's the thing. Or... Let me give you a concept, though, okay? If you come over, now, I have this plugged in a really crazy way, but the Chromecast can actually control your TV, turn it on, control the volume and everything. Imagine if you could so there's walk... there's a remote. There's no, no need for a remote. You don't have to search for the remote. You don't have to do anything. Now, what happened, I don't know how many of you were last night, when I talked about the, uh, the YouTube and Netflix stuff the other day, I said Google's going to be launching a TV service within six months. Mm -hmm. It launched two days ago. Yeah, I saw that. So imagine if you could just walk up to your TV and say, okay, Schmoogle, I'm not going to say it, okay, Schmoogle, play Big Bang Theory on the TV. And all you'd have to say is the TV if you just had one. It would turn on the TV, automatically adjust the volume, and start playing Big Bang Theory. Play Store. Okay. It would actually do that all automatically. Here's the cool thing. A lot of this stuff, a lot of people think is very uh, in the future, but you can see it exists right now. I'm, I'm, I'm demoing this on a cruise ship. The future is here. Here's the problem. So the first two things, I want to get to all five things, and then I'll take some questions on it. The first two things, this is called the Google Home. This runs about uh, 130 bucks or so, but here's the cool thing right now. If you buy a Google Home through the Google Store online, they'll give you a free Chromecast to use with it. So you can hook up the TV. It's a promo they have going on through the end of March. 
They just put it up a couple nights ago. So for $129, you get the Google Home and the Chromecast. And what's nice is I broke the base on the bottom of my first Google Home because you can actually change the, change the colors to match your environment. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. All of these gadgets I've shown so far require one thing that they need to work very well, which is Wi-Fi. How many of you have, now this is a question that actually goes back to another class. Someone asked about this. How many of you have problems getting Wi-Fi in certain areas of your house? No. Yeah, if you, have, if you have a big enough house, if your house is small, then you may not have trouble. But here's the thing to understand. This guy right here is very interesting. This is a new product called Google Wi-Fi. And I'm showing you one of three. <coughs> so what you do is you take this guy right here and you plug it into your Wi-Fi router that you currently have, that you get from your, your modem, that you get from your cable company. And this makes a Wi-Fi network. And it comes in a box with two other ones. And you put those all over your house and they blanket your house in Wi-Fi. And it works perfectly. This is what's called a mesh network. This is what we use on board. So if you've ever used a range extender, we don't use this, but we use a mesh network on board. If you've ever used a range extender before, if you've used a range extender before, you'll notice it gives different names for your different networks. You might have two networks in your house or something like this. If you notice, when you go on to your Wi-Fi settings and you open Celebrity Wi-Fi, there's just one Celebrity Wi-Fi. When you use this guy, which is called Google Wi-Fi, you just get one network across your entire house. I had problems with my family for many, many years with Wi-Fi and streaming and all these different things like that, this fixed all of those problems. So it comes in a set of three units. You plug one into the router, you plug the rest just into electricity. And once they're, that's it. And what they do is they make a mesh. They make a giant mesh that allows it to do. Now here's where this gets cool. I'm talking about these, but what you're gonna see, I'm gonna give you a little taste of the future right now. This same technology, I only have one, I have two at home but I only brought one with me just to, to show you what they look like. This same technology is going to be, is going to be what's going to be used to put Verizon, AT&T, T-Mobile, Sprint, Bell, Shaw, TELUS, all of them out of business. Within five years, you will not have your same cell phone carrier. I can make that guarantee. What's going to happen is these companies are going to start putting much bigger ones of these, like the size of this table, let's say, all over cities, and they're going to create a mesh network that blankets the entire city in Wi-Fi. And it's very, very cool. It's very, very high end. And this is kind of a taste of the future. These are called Google Wi-Fi. They did just come back in stock. The trouble with some of the things I'm going to show you, the Google Wi-Fi is back in stock. The Home and the Chromecast, you can find no problem. The others are brand new products from Google, and they haven't really ramped production up yet. I just want to show you these so you're aware of what they do. But it's very, very simple. With this one right here, when you plug it in, so you plug it in, there's an app that will guide you through how to do it. It's hard to kind of really lay that out, and it actually has a colored light right there. And when your internet's down, I'll give you the pricing in a second, when your internet's down, it goes to a red light, but it'll try and fix itself. If you're streaming something on a TV and you keep getting choppy, you can tell it to prioritize the device that's streaming. You can pause the Wi-Fi on any device or on all of the devices. So if you want to go have dinner and you want everybody to get off their phone, they can get off their phone. They sell them in, <laughs> they sell them in a single pack, which is something that, you know, if you already have an existing thing, sell them in a single pack for $129. That'll cover apartments and small houses. The triple pack is uh, $299 for the triple pack, and that's U.S. dollars. Um, and you can get them right on Google Store, on their online store. They just came back in, in business. But here's the thing to understand. Who knows? Well other than the company we're going to talk about tomorrow in the cloud class, who knows the internet better than Google? It prioritizes, it routes, it does all of that. So here's the funny thing. We've, all, we've had the same internet provider at home forever, but putting these in gave us 40% more internet speed. Then I'm going to tell you a dirty secret. It gave us 40% more internet speed than our Apple routers did, than our Airport Expresses did. It's the truth. I, I never don't tell the truth, but it gives us... 40% more internet speed than our Apple routers do. And that's what's really, really interesting. It's called Google Wi-Fi. And these will be available in the store. You can get the home, you can get the other one, but I recommend you get it from the Google store because they come bundled together. I don't see it, but I'll see it. Where's the it? Google store is an online website. <coughs> oh, wow. So you go to okay. Google, it's called the Google Play Store. It's online, and it gives you a little idea. Now, out of their new products, I will tell you there was one that I don't like. Well, I liked the concept of it. This guy I showed last night, I'm just going to briefly talk about him real quick. This is Google's smartwatch. 
that they made. And here's the problem with it. I, I've never said what I'm about to say before about a product, and this is really strange for me to say this. This product does too much. <laughs> it does too much because it has a nice big display. It's got a SIM card inside so you can actually replace your cell phone. You can talk to it. You can say, OK, Google. You can do all of that. Here's the problem. It does so much, it gets four hours of battery life on my wrist. So I had to charge this like three times in a day. Now, I'm hoping this is something they can fix with software. And I will tell you, I am an incredibly early adopter. I'm so excited because my Nintendo Switch, which some of you probably have no clue what it is. Some of you might know. It's Nintendo's, you know the Wii that all the kids wanted a couple years ago? The new Nintendo console comes to my house tomorrow, and I get it on Sunday. So we're going to do a whole evening thing on the new Nintendo console, which is really cool. Just kind of know what it is. But I want to talk the most about this last variable. Now, how many of you in this room don't have iPhones, have Android phones? You can be honest with me right now. I called it OK Google. OK. So what I want to show you right now is the, is the Google iPhone. And a lot of people look at me and they go, huh? If you d I don't mind if you have an Android phone. The problem is, here's the thing to understand. This phone has too many hands in the pot. I had a guy who was here the other night. I'm seeing if he's here now. He was here the other night. I'm not going to say anything bad. I'm going to tell you a true story. He forgot his PIN code. Oh, that was really interesting. But it was listening. Did you notice what it opened up there? Yeah. <laughs> so it was listening. Big bang theory. If you remember, I asked for it. But he had a Samsung phone that he forgot the password on. And it was a Samsung phone that was sold him by Verizon running software from Google. So who do you think would help him actually fix that phone? Nobody. Nobody. Oh. Nobody. Because it's Samsung phone running Google software run by Verizon. So he didn't know his passcode to get in the phone because he always used his fingerprint before and he forgot his passcode. So I helped him reset and redo the device last night because here's the trouble. There is nobody that will. Because when you're looking at a Samsung phone, you've got so many hands in the pot. Just imagine, if you have a Samsung phone that's from Verizon, the insurance is provided by some insurance company that's Verizon's, and the phone is running Samsung, running Android, it's a mess. Here's the cool thing. This is the first real competitor, in my opinion, to the iPhone. And it is the second best phone in the world. The best phone in the world is the iPhone 7 Plus. The second best phone in the world is the Google Pixel. And the third best phone in the world is the iPhone 7. So it lies in between the iPhone 7 and the iPhone 7 Plus. The only reason that this is number two to me, I'm going to tell you why this is number two to me, the only reason this is number two is the camera is better than it is on the iPhone 7 Plus when it has an internet connection. Because this application uses Google Photos to make your pictures better in real time while you're taking your pictures. So it's called the Google Pixel. And it very much looks like an iPhone. It very, very, very much looks like an iPhone. Uh, and what's cool is if you're going out and shopping around, I'm not telling you to ditch your iPhone and get a Google Pixel, but I'm telling you if you've got people that are Samsung users, that's an interesting way to go. But what I think is very interesting is along with the Google Pixel, they, pick, they ship something called the Google Daydream. You're laughing. But you all want to try this. <laughs> Let's be completely honest. I'm going to see how much I can show you on here. I'm going to get this working. But here's what's cool. What this does is it's very similar to the Google Home. When I put this here, oh, using, OK. So I've placed my phone into the headset. I've already done that. OK, let me see if it wants to behave. And you're going to see what I'm going to see. OK. Oh, my gosh. Oh my goodness. So I'm only seeing one image, just so you know. I only see one image. But this is, let's say you're on an airplane or something like that. Hey. Don't turn on the x-ray. I'm not turning on the x-ray. I learned that last cruise. I turned on the x-ray vision and we saw some, no, there's no x-ray vision. <laughs> but I am seeing, let me make sure which hand I've got this in. So I'm seeing this right here. And if I want to look at my photos, I can look at my panoramas and I can actually see my panoramas in a full panoramic. I can see, let me go ahead, let me open up something from this cruise, maybe. So this has access to all of my Google photos. It has access to all of my Google stuff. As you've noticed, I'm a bit fixated on Google, and I love some of the stuff that Google does, but I still use Apple hardware. You'll notice I'm using a MacBook Pro. I'm using an iPad. Here's, here's a panorama. 
Right, so, and you're seeing it as multiple, well, I shouldn't show that. <laughs> I'm going to look that way. That's safer. But this is a, this is a uh, catamaran we took to the Tetons. And I can look all the way around. And they're making a lot of videos and things nowadays. You can actually watch YouTube in full 360 degrees if you wanted to. They make YouTube videos in 360 degrees. Now, what's very cool is this can be used to augment your reality. I'm going to give you a little glimpse towards the future. One of the big things coming up in the future is going to be augmented reality. It's going to be, now we just take our camera out and we take a picture of something, right? This is going to lead you into where we're headed tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going to show you how you can not only take a picture of something, but you can find out what you've taken a picture of just by taking a picture of it, if that makes sense. It's augmenting your reality, which is what's really cool. And this is where this is all headed. Oh, I have to choose my my Gmail account, and then I can go in and I can watch videos, I can watch full 360 degrees, this is Angel Falls in Venezuela, and it's going to load up, and I'm not just going to see what's in front of me, but I'll be able to look all the way around myself to see what's going on in there, which is what's really cool, but this is what's called augmented reality, if I watch, you'll see I'm going to leave this playing for a minute, just so you can see what's going on, this is in 8K, so good luck to me. Uh, but it's going to go in, and as I look around, I have a full 360-degree view. What I wanted to show you today, this is the whole purpose of what I showed you today. I showed you a lot of things. If something piqued your interest, I'm happy to talk to you more about the individual thing that piqued your interest. But here's what I want to show you today. Google is now making hardware. And that's something very important to understand, because what that means is Apple now has a real competitor. This is available in the UK. They just started selling the Pixel at Carphone Warehouse the other day. Like two, three days ago, they started selling it at Carphone Warehouse. But you can see, this is actually the falls. And if I had my head inside here, I would have a full 360 degree view. But what I was trying to say is Google is now making hardware. And I will tell you, this is all first generation product. The only thing that's second generation is the Chromecast, because they've had that for a while. Everything other than the Pixel and the Daydream work perfectly well with your iPhone. When companies make good quality products to compete with Apple, that makes Apple make better quality products to compete with them. Does that make sense there? Yeah. I think that's what's really important to understand. Mm -hmm. So I'm showing you this so you understand that there's a company, and they're even doing things aesthetically. You'll notice that this thing is not hard plastic. This has, if you feel it, it's the material of yoga pants. Ooh. So it feels like yoga pants against your face. It's just wow. kind of really weird. And you're looking at this. Felt it. <laughs> someone that's saying they're going to go buy a new Samsung phone. I know a lot of you in this room are not going to say that, but the right answer is get a Pixel instead. Because that's made by Google, supported by Google. And I'll tell you the last good thing about these, this exists for now. I can't promise this is going to exist forever. If you need help with any of these products, there's a phone number you call. There's no phone tree or anything like that. Believe it or not, someone picks up after two rings. Ooh. There's a phone number that picks up after two rings. I called them at three in the morning because I was having a problem with something. Will that exist forever? No. 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 But does it exist right now? Yeah. Yeah. So that is OK. I, I can say it. That is OK Google. And I say, OK Google, show me photos of cats on Batman. You don't know what's about to come up. <laughs> That's dangerous. I should stop talking. Sorry, I'm not sure how to help with that Yeah, because I kept talking. But I can go in and I can do all of these different things. And just so you know, there is a mute button. So Microphone if you don't on. want Edward Snowden to hear you, <laughs> you can hit the mute Microphone button. Microphone on. And I'll have this running a little bit later. But if you have any questions on this, feel free to ask me. But the whole goal is that I've exposed you to something you would never otherwise right. see. And that's the goal, <laughs> is that Google's that making these things. Again, it's called the, this is the Google Home. What's actually running the TV is called the Google Chromecast. This is called Google Wi-Fi. This is called Don't Bother. Uh, 
<laughs> and the delay is because it's going back to Google. To yes, it's stuff. because it's going back to Google to get my stuff, and it's going over satellite. And here's the cool thing. You're going to notice that the, Siri is actually the fastest thing to respond. Alexa and Google take a while. I'm going to do a Siri demo in my class tomorrow, and Siri's going to work nearly instantly. And that's because Siri's been around for longer, and it works a lot quicker. But at home, understand, it's going to be fractional seconds. I'm bouncing through a satellite, and I'm doing this all crazy stuff that you should never demo on a cruise ship. But that is because I like to live life dangerously. Tomorrow, 10.30, in here is the Mac class, Mac to the Future Part 2. Please don't ask me what it's going to be about, because I haven't figured that out yet. Um, so, uh, Mac to the Future Part 2, it's going to be different than Part 1. Um, and we've got, at 1 o'clock, What's the Cloud, which is in Central. And then we've got the VIPs in the afternoon. But then we also have the next day at 1 o'clock is Gmail and more. Okay. We missed a class the other day on apps, so I'm going to do Gmail for 25 minutes, and then we're going to do 20 minutes on apps, and that is going to be on the last C-Day. Okay. Bye! <laughs> <laughs>